Hey Google, can you show me the nearest petrol station? Eh, sorry, wrong car. Hey guys, it's another early morning, which means it's time for another media drive today. But today's media drive is actually a little different because we're gonna be driving the XC40 recharge that was launched actually just yesterday uh, by the time we're actually filming this. So different in a way that we won't be actually burning any fuel today, not a single drop. And uh, so in addition to actually testing out the car, seeing how it performs, how it's uh, 408 horsepower and 660 newton meters actually fuel. Uh, we're actually going to Genting Highlands today, so we get to feel it. Uh, how it handles as well on the twistier road, seeing that this car is actually quite heavy. Uh, but in addition to that, we're actually also gonna get a feel of how it's like to drive an electric car, not just as a daily city car driver, but also how it does on a longer journey, especially on a hilly road. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the car and get going. Okay, so we've just headed out from our home base in Saojana over here. And on that short drive over from the hotel over to the traffic light here, the first thing that I've realized is uh, because the drive, uh, the drive instructor has actually turned on the one pedal driving by default. So for us, or rather for those who are used to driving normal petrol cars, it really does take a bit of getting used to because by instinct you are trained to let go of your accelerator straight away and press on the brake. Over here when you do that, the car immediately slows down and it's by quite a huge uh, factor. So yeah, for example, I just did it again. It, it really does take some getting used to. But so far, I don't think I've ever had to use the brakes just yet. Right now, we're going through the toll gate, which means it's the perfect time to test out the electric power. The instant torque of 660 Nm. Uh, let's see how it feels like. Ready? Keep right at the fork. It's your spaceship like feel that you get from every but yeah, in a B segment uh, SUV like this, it feels very, very impressive to be honest. I actually had to brake quite hard over there, so I don't really end into the car in front. So the main difference of this fully electric uh, XC40, I mean obviously aside from the whole electric powertrain, is that this car actually runs on the Android Automotive OS system on both the infotainment as well as the driving uh, digital instrument cluster over here. So, usually on our media drives, we'll be handed a phone which we'll plug in into the infotainment system and we'll use it uh, with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto to sort of give us directions on where to go. But today, uh, all we have to do is just key in the location straight into the infotainment display itself and uh, you actually get the full Google Maps experience and it's not just the full uh, Google Maps experience because you actually get a bit more uh, one thing that you get is actually your estimated remaining battery left when you reach uh, the destination that you've set and on top of that the best part about this experience so far that I realized is you actually get a map display in full color right in the center of your digital instrument cluster so you don't actually have to look to the side to get your maps so you can use this for your music or whatever entertainment you want to use it for you can just look at the maps over here that's something that you don't get on android auto that's something you don't get on apple carplay uh, for now at least so we're driving at about 100 kilometers per hour now on the highway and first impressions i've got to tell you as usual in an electric car it is really 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 quiet almost eerily so as in you don't get any sort of vibrations from the engine you don't get any uh, engine noise all you get is just a slight rumbling from the tires and even then it's not a lot uh, i would say this car's uh, sound insulation and everything like that is really really good and even at highway speeds uh, uh, i should say and even at the highway speed limit of about 110 120 there's no wind noise or anything like that from around this area it's just mainly 
changes the road noise from the tyres which is something that I can definitely live with uh, after having tried so many cars and uh, picking up speed wow <laughs> okay. so that was from 110 to 140 in about 2-3 uh, seconds I would say and uh, yeah even at highway speeds just putting your foot down on the throttle you get an instant torque uh, instant power it makes overtaking uh, on a highway just like so easy it's a, it's a, it really is an, a different experience driving an electric car and it's something I think most of you really have to give it a try to experience it okay so we have stopped here by the highway uh, round Kara highway to sort of do like a stop photo and video shoot stop so I think this is like the perfect time to show off the Google integration of the infotainment system so for example I'm just gonna say hey Google can you take me home navigating to home and as we mentioned just now there is the uh, remaining battery percentage left shown right over here on the uh, Google Maps itself and yeah so if you need to go somewhere further it will actually suggest that you take a stop to charge the car before you reach your final destination and uh, of course this being a electric car there is actually a shortcut to find your uh, nearest charger so let me just turn off the navigation and uh, on the home page just click that and uh, it will just show you the nearest charging stations around where I am right now yeah and it even shows uh, how many of them are fast chargers and how many of them are medium chargers and uh, of course there's also the normal slow chargers okay let's see what else we can do with this uh, google integration hey google i am feeling a bit hot maybe you'd like to go swimming <laughs> that was definitely not what i was expecting hey google can you turn up the fan speed got it turning up the fan speed by one Hey Google, what's my remaining range? You can drive for about 230 kilometers with the remaining charge. And aside from the Google Maps and Google Assistant integration, you also get a actual Google Play Store built in into the infotainment system as well, where you can download a few different apps, including Spotify, YouTube Music, Tidal Music, but unfortunately, it doesn't have what I use, which is Apple Music. So, unfortunately, I can't play my own music over here. But, of course, as usual, you can always connect your phone via Bluetooth and stream it that way. So now, I've literally just opened the car door and sat inside. And you can see everything is actually already running. So, there's really nothing for me to do. And it's just, the car just turns on by itself. And uh, if you look over here, there's not even a push start button anymore. But this plastic cover here really sort of makes it look a little bit cheap but anyway once you sit into the dashboard everything turns on by itself and all you need to do uh, obviously with a key with you but all you need to do to drive off is literally just step on the brakes pull the gear lever back and you're off and once you reach your destination just put it into p over here by pressing that button and uh, Open the door, car just turns off. Okay, so we've reached the slightly twistier bit of the Karak Highway. And uh, first things first, you can definitely feel the weight of the car. And it's especially noticeable when you go through like slight evenness or slight bumps in the road because the weight really pulls you down into the road after you go through the pass. It, it does sort of feel a bit weird in a way that because our normal cars that we drive is way lighter than this let me remind you that this car weighs over 2 tons it's almost like a pickup truck in terms of weight I mean I'm not surprised but you can definitely feel the weight that being said though when you're going through corners it still grips pretty well and uh, even on some spirited driving you can feel that it does tend to want to drift out a little bit especially on higher speed corners but honestly I don't think it's anything out of the 
SUV kind of driving experience. I think what helps that is mainly because the batteries are actually placed in the floor of the XC40 recharge. So essentially it helps lower the center of gravity of the car. So even though it does weigh a lot, most of the weight is actually down low. But what I enjoy the most about this electric powertrain is actually how the car responds almost directly to your throttle input. And it's so precise that when you are heading out of the corners, you can just gradually put your feet down and you can feel the car reacting to how you press the throttle and you can really control the lines out of the corner by just using your throttle pedals. And it feels almost like you're playing a video game because the reaction is that instant. But if there's one thing that I can comment on though, it's the brake feel of this car, it's still a little bit off. It's a little bit spongy, it doesn't feel like you're actually pressing on the brakes itself, which is fair because it is doing its regenerative braking stuff. So it's calculating by itself how much of the actual physical brake it's using, how much of the braking is actually done by the motors itself. But as a driver of a normal non-electrified car, I do wish that it is a bit more connected in terms of brake feel. But at least it still feels pretty firm and not completely disconnected. Okay, so we've just arrived at our second stop of the day uh, for a quick photo and video session again and also a driver swap. So while we have the car to ourselves here, I just want to give you a quick walk around and uh, see what's new with this fully electric model. First things first, this is still based on the pre facelift model here in Malaysia. So it doesn't have the sharper headlights and all, but I think it still looks really, really good, especially in this uh, sage green exterior color with the blacked out roof. In general, it does look very, very similar to all of the other XC40s out there, including the same bumpers, uh, same headlights, same tail lights, everything. But of course, this being an EV model, there are a few things that you can see to point out that it is the electric model. And the most noticeable one, of course, is the front grille over here. It gets a blanked out panel uh, that covers up essentially the entire grille with just one little slit down there for air to pass through. Inside this Volvo logo here is where you'll find your radar sensor. And of course, there's also the camera there, which is a new addition to this XC40 recharge because this model here now gets a 360 degree camera. Moving on, flanking the grille are the same standard Toss hammer headlight that still until today I think is one of the best designs on a headlight so far. Moving over to the side, this is where you'll find the 19 inch alloy wheels uh, in this pretty snazzy two tone design. And the front and the rear are actually different widths, so the rear is actually a little bit uh, wider. The other difference you can find on this uh, fully electric model is actually up here. Uh, this recharge badging on the C pillars but aside from that really uh, it's very very hard to find any difference especially around the back because this is the same bumper and uh, without the tailpipes just like the PHEV model just like the R design model as well nowadays before we head inside though there's actually one more thing I want to show you and it's over here so this is where the fuel filler used to be now it's where the charging port is and uh, of course, when you remove this, you get the uh, Type 2 CCS port for fast DC charging. Uh, otherwise, when you cover it up, the top part is what you use for your uh, charging at home. This is your regular Type 2 port. And the reason that Volvo has opted to put the charging port at the back here is because they want to free up the front underneath the bonnet here to give you an extra 31 liters of cargo room. So you can store smaller stuff like your charging cables or even your smaller handbags or something that you don't want people to access easily. Uh, <laughs> I'm not hinting at anything. Uh, but anyway, let me just open it quickly and show you. So to open the front uh, frunk, it is actually a bit uh, annoying because you have to come in here just like your regular petrol power car to open the bonnet. Moving over to the front, you still have to reach your hand underneath here where there's a latch for you to pull to open up. But that's where the similarity ends because here it's completely blank. You have your washer fluid uh, filler pot over here. But aside from that, it's just a blank piece of plastic. 
and this here covers your extra frunk with 31 liters of storage space where you can put your charging cable which really is missing over here underneath the cover here you also get your emergency tire kit with a emergency air filler as well okay now let's move inside so check this out i open the door the keys are with me and once i sit down the car turns on by itself and once you're seated the car is actually fully functional with aircon with your whole infotainment system is actually working as well but anyway as a whole the dashboard really is very 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 similar i would say 99 percent identical to your other xc90 uh, models here in malaysia you get the 9 inch central infotainment touchscreen here in a portrait orientation the 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster of course both of them now running on the google android automotive os otherwise the steering wheel the aircon and media controls even the trim design over here is completely identical and as for standard equipment you also get a wireless charging pad down here you get harman kardon premium sound system and as for these seats i think they look pretty much identical to the R Design Sport seats with a leather and nubuck kind of microfiber upholstery. The seats in front here are powered with the driver's side getting additional memory function. And yeah, in terms of physical features, really there isn't much to pick it out apart from. And uh, I think lastly, let me just show you the 360 degree camera. So I put it into reverse and just like that, you get that full view around the car. But weirdly enough, though, some parts of the camera, depending how you move the car, uh, they are actually brighter as you can see down here. I think that has something to do with the automatic exposure adjustments. Nothing too worrying, but still weird to see in a premium product like that. Uh, anyway, it also has the dynamic guidelines, so you can see where you're moving exactly. Okay, let me quickly jump into the back seat and talk you through it as well. Over here in the back seat, well, it's again pretty much identical to the other XC40s. You still get your rear aircon blowers, but at the same time, that also means some of the drawbacks from the XC40s are also present over here. Uh, in particular, the seats, I feel it's just a little bit too upright, and the padding down here, it doesn't really extend uh, to your entire length of your legs. So, you kind of feel like you are hanging off of the seat instead of the seats supporting your legs. With that being said though, even though the battery is actually underneath the floor of the XC40 Recharge, the floor on the interior is not actually raised or at least not by much. I don't really notice it and uh, I think as you can see, I'm not sitting with my legs up like that. But yeah, otherwise, there's really nothing much to shout about back here or anywhere in the cabin for the matter. So anyway, to end our quick walk around, we've come to the back of the XC40 again, which comes with a powered tailgate. As long as you have a car keys with you, you just wave your feet underneath the bumper down there and the tailgate will automatically open up. And uh, once it's opened up, you can actually see the boot space at the back here. Now in terms of numbers, this here is actually slightly smaller. If I'm not mistaken, it's around 40 to 50 liters smaller than the regular XC40. But I think it's still a very usable space and uh, you get your usual hooks over here. And the floor here can actually be lifted up and partitioned midway through. Yeah, but otherwise, not too much to shout about. There's a true loading door over there and the seats can also be folded down 60-40 uh, if you need any more space to carry longer items. And uh, well, doing some spirited driving, I really got to give it up to Volvo because I'm actually pretty amazed at how natural or how normal this car feels in a more athletic kind of driving experience. Despite it weighing more than two tons, in these kind of scenarios, it really doesn't feel any more different than a regular SUV. There's no extra body roll, there's no swaying about and the grip levels are actually really good and the best part about driving an electric car is just how easy it is to shoot out of corners that feeling really does not get old at all and it's so easy to control just how much you press on the accelerator is literally how much the car is going to accelerate because once you press on the accelerator the car just moves straight away 
and driving down Genting, we've actually used zero percent of the battery because when we're constantly braking, the battery is actually recharging itself. So you can have fun without worrying about your range at all. Now that we're back in the city, in your normal day-to-day -day traffic, well, the driving experience really does feel quite normal. Like you're just driving any other car. Uh, provided, of course, that you turn off the one pedal driving mode. To be honest, I haven't been giving it a fair chance for me to really get used to how to drive with a one pedal mode. But having turned it off for the majority of this drive, driving this car in normal traffic, it just feels very normal. Except that it's very, very quiet as well. And it actually makes having conversations in the car very, very easily. Because I'm driving at 100 km per hour now. And I think I can practically whisper and my drive partner can still hear me and uh, I know most of us car guys don't really see it as anything important but for the most part of people who are buying this car small families or even the newlywed couples it's very often that you're gonna find someone else in the car and being so quiet really makes it a more pleasant experience overall and of course on top of that you also get all of the advanced driver assist systems and on this car it's actually the latest generation of the system which gives you extra sensors and radar and there's also extra features like we mentioned just now the new 360 degree surround view monitor there's also a new rearward uh, autonomous emergency braking in addition to just the normal rear cross traffic alert I think it's a pretty decent package to actually be your only car that you own uh, provided that you have the place to charge it of course speaking of charging well for a whole day of driving uh, up and down Genting and of course us being us we tend to drive a bit harder than the usual people with that being said we did about 200 kilometers so far and uh, we still have 36 percent of our batteries left so I'm too occupied to do the math but I don't think it's too far off from the 418 kilometers claim uh, range based on the WLTP test cycle. And I think if you really try for it, I think 400 kilometers should be quite doable. But anyway, that's about it for us today. I hope this video gives you a bit of an insight to how it's like owning an electric car and of course giving you a first impression of the XE40 Recharge. Now of course the pricing is still not available just yet that will come on the 4th of April but from what I've heard it should be quite competitive with its other rivals If you enjoyed the video please do click the like button because it really helps us out and also be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and click the bell icon beside that so you get the notifications on all of our latest videos Anyway that's been it I'm Woon and I'll see you in the next one